I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Thanks for joining us. It's back to school time, and we all know that this time of year can be stressful for you and your kids. So we're here to help you ease your way back into your fall schedule. Right now I'm at Peninsula High School where we're going to begin this program with some great back to school tips from the principal. All right, I'm now in the principal's office at Peninsula High with our favorite principal, Mitzi Kress, who has lots of back to school tips to share just to help everyone ease in and have a successful school year. And thanks for being here, Mitzi. Oh, my pleasure. Excellent. Well, I know you're excited for the 2011-2012 school year. Very excited. Just start off with sort of an overall, like, I, I, ideas for parents and kids just to make the transition in an easy way. I think it's always difficult to transition from summer to back to school and um, starting to get sleep is a main thing because students have slept in usually as much as they want during the summer and I always recommend about a week before school starts begin that schedule. Uh, if you're going to be taking a zero period, uh, don't wait till the first day of school <laughs> to manage to get up at 5 o'clock to get to that 7 o'clock class. So right. I always recommend the week before uh, start working on that new schedule. I think that's really important. Uh, it's very important for kids to get at least 8 hours of sleep. Um, at least 8 hours of sleep, preferably 9 or 10 hours. And I think most families don't know that. And when I do surveys with students, I find that most of them are getting around 6 hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. And for their development, it's critically important that they get 8 hours of sleep for them to um, reach their optimum abilities. Of course, the challenge is with, we all know how these kids, whether they're taking AP classes and using their incredible schedules mm -hmm. that everyone's doing from sports to all the extracurricular to get mm -hmm. that six hours or to get more than that sometimes is a challenge. So I guess mm -hmm. the key is right, really being organized. Mm -hmm. I think organization is really important, but even the most organized student, if they're overscheduled, um, they're not going to be able to keep up with everything. And so that's when balance is really important. And I think that that's where parents can help out if they see that their child is um, up till 11 o'clock or midnight doing their homework, then that's time to think about dropping one of those activities because there's only, what, 168 hours in a week, um, something has to give if right. students um, are taking on too much. And what, um, what they shouldn't be eliminating is sleep. Um, and that's another thing. The first couple of weeks of school, I think it's really important to think about, you know, is the course load too much? Have they taken on too many honors, too many APs, too many activities? And during those first few weeks of school, it's a time to think about perhaps dropping something if they've taken on too much. Right. Your transition, this is your second year <laughs> as principal of, of Peninsula High. You've been with the district a long time. Yes. What's some, some of the exciting challenges and goals you'll have right here for the school? Well, um, gosh, this, we have a lot of construction. <laughs> <laughs> We, we'll see, we're putting Logistics. sod in. We're hoping that the school's going to be put back together after redoing all the plumbing all summer. Uh, we've been torn up. We've looked like a construction zone. Um, and I think the campus is going to be um, in good shape for school to start. Uh, you know, like the day before school starts, yeah. I think <laughs> it'll all be finished. Yeah. And we have uh, new classrooms going in. We have a new gym, a new music room. Wow. We're getting very close to uh, starting construction on our new pool. I think those are the big things that are happening. A I, lot of exciting things for you and in the district because we, all, we always constantly hear about the financial crisis that <laughs> the schools are in. And um, how healthy does the school year look for the dist district are you seeing right now? Well, we've had layoffs, we've had layoffs um, and, uh, you know, we're in constant crisis with our budget thanks to the, you know, issues with the state of California. But I think the district has done a, a good job thanks to the support of our community and the Ed Foundation. Things are looking good. Many of the teachers that were laid off, we were able to hire back. Um, our counselors Great. are returning, our nurses back. Many of the teachers that were laid off at Peninsula High School have um uh, been reinstated, so we're looking uh, we're looking good here. Keeping our kids healthy, we're healthy mm -hmm. minds. What are your suggestions as principal and a mom? Well, start off with breakfast. <laughs> yeah, now it's that that most important meal of the day. Um, I think it's really important for kids to get started with um, a good breakfast in the morning, and I encourage families to uh, make sure students have breakfast before they come to school. Just before our testing started, uh, we were uh, serving uh, breakfast to all of our students through our cafeteria, and I had one dad who's a doctor, and he checked with the nutritionist 
at the uh, local hospital and I asked, uh, or he said he was going to find out what was the best, most optimum breakfast to help our students do their very, very best on star testing. And that breakfast was? Drum roll. A bean burrito with a little bit of cheese. There you go. <laughs> so we well, did offer it on our menu. But you know, you know, lots of moms will be out there stocking up on tortillas and beans. So they, all their kids are getting A's in the classroom. Well, as we wrap this up, anything you want to add that will be important to help students um, make the transition again and for their parents just that they have a great school year? I, I think it's just really important for students to, um, to keep balance. I think balance is the most important thing. Um, and I worry about students and their stress. Sometimes students take on a little bit too much. And uh, parents can be our eyes at home. Teachers can be our eyes in the classroom. And if we see students that are becoming stressed um, for taking on too much academically, which happens a lot, uh, they need to talk with the teachers. And definitely, we have an incredible counseling staff. And we're here to support teacher, to support uh, families in helping students uh, maintain balance. We want healthy kids um, who work hard, but have a lot of fun. All right, we wish you a very successful year here at Penn High, and we'll be back on campus. Thanks, Liz. Thank you so much, Mitzi Kress, for joining us. So, Grant, are you excited to be returning to Peninsula High as a sophomore? Yeah, um, I'm, gonna, I, I'm, I'm excited to see all my friends again, I think, and I'm, I'm kind of ready to go back to school. And what does it take for you to be successful at school? Like, what kinds of things do you do? Well, I, I definitely have to manage my time a lot, so like, like definitely like do my homework quickly so that I can have time for sports and everything. So, okay. Right now you're in a special program here to help new kids, uh, the new kids on the block. Talk about what you're learning here today in this mentoring program. So basically we're just getting the idea of like what it means to kind of uh, like, uh, what does it mean, like counsel uh, the students, like like if they have any problems, like we're the, we're the people that they're going to go to, like we're their... Uh, or their students that they're going to go to if they need help adjusting to their new environment. So, yeah. Of course, this is a big campus, a lot of students. Yeah. How did you make that transition? How did you make it so that it was easy to be a successful student here? Well, um, I played sports, so I met a lot of friends playing sports. So that was mainly how I did it. I, yeah, played sports. I met a lot of friends. So. Do you have a favorite back-to-school snack? A uh, snack. Um, I like the uh, Kelly's Corner Italian sandwich. Here. Joining me now is the Safe School Counselor here at Penn High, Mrs. Christine Lopez. Thanks for inviting us in, and you've got quite a program going on here today, a mentoring program. Yes. Give us more details about what you're doing here today. Well, basically, uh, we have a, um, a quite a few incoming freshmen coming in, about 700 new kids, in addition to approximately 100 transfer students coming in. And so we decided to have a peer mentor program to be able to pair a new student with um, a current student to be able to allow their transition into high school to be a little bit easier. So our peer mentors are basically going to be kind of the go-to person um, to our new students. So any questions that they have regarding school, any tutoring they might need, um, just our job is really to keep them well informed of everything that's going on at Peninsula in addition to them being a huge support to our students. Since you are the safe school counselor here, you get to see it all, and you obviously get to deal with students that might obviously be in crisis or having difficulties. What do you say to the parents and the families that have had situations in the past that they already are already kind of fearful and worrisome about starting school, thinking, oh no, are we going to make this a good year? Well, I would like for them to have confidence that it can be okay. You know, the, the wonderful thing about Peninsula in general is that there's just a huge support system here. And so, um, you know, with the counselors that we have and the teachers, everybody here is genuinely passionate about our students. And so now, in addition to all of our faculty and staff, with us having this peer mentor program, um, I want them to just try to not worry about it and that there's a lot of support here. We recognize the fact that tr the transition to high school can be a difficult one, um, but there's a lot of people here who genuinely care about the kids and will be there for the kids if there's any difficulties that arise. Of course, okay, well, I'm here with the senior Julia Hernandez. Very exciting. You ready to go back to school? I'm actually really excited. You know, senior year is kind of like a big deal and um, a lot of my friends and I were, were getting ready for college applications and getting to make the big jump to from high school to college and kind of growing up and getting out in the world. <laughs> We're right now here in a school mentoring program. You're going to help new kids that are showing up on campus. What are you learning here today? Um, we're learning a lot about how to deal with problems and um, how to deal with people uh, that need help. And also just, I mean, 
the transition from either middle school to high school or from another area to Peninsula, I mean, it's kind of a big deal, especially in the middle of high school, if you have to switch from one school to another school, you have to leave all your friends behind and everything, and we just want to make sure that, um, you know, our big Panther community makes it a, 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 a more manageable place with the, with the peer mentors. So you're a senior now, so you understand what it means to have stress in school. How do you deal with that? I mean, there's a lot going on with classes and just putting everything together in a successful way. Yeah, I mean, stress is definitely a big deal, especially at, at an amazing school like this. But, I mean, just being able to let go on weekends, just hang out with friends, go, you know, do some, like, little, like, at least, at, as least stress as we can have would be awesome. But, I mean, just being able to let go with your friends and kind of just have a good time. And one thing is, is to have a healthy air, you got to have healthy snacks. Do you have a favorite back-to-school snack or, uh, that you like to pack? Strawberries. <laughs> definitely strawberries. Hi, I'm talking with Allegra Miller. You totally get what it means to be a new student at a new school. You transferred to Peninsula High last year. How did you deal with all that in the transition? Well, it definitely was a big transition just because it was coming from a small school to such a big school like Penn. But, you know, I felt really welcomed. A lot of the reason because I had peer mentors of my own who really took me under their wing and showed me the way. And I'm really hoping I can do the same for the freshmen this year. And just getting involved in clubs and taking advantage of every opportunity Peninsula offers, I felt like I made the transition pretty quickly. So you're here now learning how to be a peer mentor. What are the tips they're t teaching you on how to help other kids make this transition? Well they're saying just being really open and welcoming and really um, like understanding them too and being a good listener and especially if they're having problems really understanding and just coming to the other counselors when you need help or just introducing them to your friends or other activities and helping them to be a member of the Panther community. This exciting time back to school time how do you get yourself ready? Um, well, I think it's definitely something I've been anticipating all summer, and so just um, back to school shopping is fun. <laughs> and you know, just um, stuff like this where you just sort of get back in the swing of things with your friends and stuff, and just being here sort of brings it all back, and I think it's going to be a good year. It's all about staying healthy during the school year. Coming up next, we're going to take a trip to the grocery store with my favorite shopper, Maria Soreo, and pick out some healthy snacks. Stay with us. Well, as promised, I have joined Liz here in Pavilions, and we are talking back to school and eating healthier. Absolutely. Now, Liz, I know that you have three kids, so you know what it's like to have to shop healthy for kids and for back to school. So I noticed you've already done some shopping. We started right here in the, we got. in the best place in the house, which is the produce department. Exactly. Yep. Because obviously, we want to keep our kids healthy, right. their brains sharp. And I don't only have three kids, they have three boys. They're always three boys. hungry. Right. And the thing is, as you know, I mean, they want to grab that junk food and the, and the sugar. Oh, stuff but yes. that doesn't really keep them going it's not really healthy fuel it's not and especially when you're in school and you're in school right. all day whether you're eating the lunch or after for a snack you want to do something so healthy. the goal is power foods you know obviously okay. starting off with a great breakfast we do a lot of fruit in our house my okay. house is always if you open my refrigerator I one thing I always have are I have blueberries okay. I'm big on berries berries blueberries are power are foods lots of antioxidants and you know what the you know, beautiful thing about these they put them in their cereal They'll put them in yogurt in the morning to start their day, and right. it's just fiber and all that good stuff. Okay. So always, I always have berries on hand. Okay. Of course, right now we're still in the good berry season. Right. Um, also, oranges, cut up oranges. You can never have enough of these, especially for athletes, right? Absolutely. Just packing a snack. I'll probably cut them up an orange in eight quarters, and maybe stick with them a nice healthy granola bar or something okay. like that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, morning start, along with cereal, I love this yogurt. Yogurt, the all right. Greek yogurts are the rage, not just because I'm Greek, but they are amazing. <laughs> Thing. Um, in fact, Greek yogurt in my house gets used for a lot of things, not just for fruits, but um, I'll make dips See. out of it. Okay. It actually tastes like sour cream. The fat free, Great. low fat, low and fat. salad dressings as well. Make right. salad dressings with it. It's just, it's always always this is a staple in my home. Okay. Again, a lot of protein to that. Okay. Um, avocados. Avocados are great for sandwiches. Good in the we morning. Know sandwiches are healthy. Sandwiches, sandwiches yep. are awesome. And so, right. um, you know, as we're talking about like the power foods you'll find in my house again would be you'd find lots of fruits and veggies, carrots, you know, kids love carrot sticks. A lot of kids energy. just want to be busy with snack time. I think so. Lots of little things. I so. noticed also that you picked up these salads. Yes, this is sort of became the rage, I think, last year. Okay. Sort of little bistro, right. small salads. They're usually a couple hundred calories. Right. So I actually, my kids have these for a snack when they come home. It's not just a meal. Okay. This wouldn't be enough. 
but um, you know they, they're packed with a lot of protein they usually have cut up turkey yellow beans fiber with corn the only thing you got to watch when you're buying these the is salad where the dressing. fat gets too much yes. is their dressing so maybe you want to either uh, substitute that with a low-fat dressing right. put it in a container or something like that because they are a little bit uh, much and they have all, all different kinds yeah. which is and really and these cool. have a great shelf life you can keep these for weeks so I will literally pick up a half a dozen of these nice and you know nowadays you know with kids having the choice at school a lot of the schools have salad bars which is wonderful they do you eat all your vegetables Maria I do pretty much because I like vegetables so I'm kind of a vegetable fruit girl yeah. I always kind of like that but I also do a sweet tooth I have to admit Liz so what do you buy for your kids when they want something that's a little sweeter that's not a candy bar because obviously that's not the good that's well, not the good fat right well the thing is is um, I try to choose because um, all of my kids over the years have had to deal with weight issues we all know right now obesity yeah a third huge. of the kids in America right now are obese too so, much um, too much. and it's because they're eating too much sugars and, and all right. that and then also not exercising enough but anyway for sweets I pick things like graham crackers okay lower sugar a better choice because they're gonna they're gonna want it I pick things like healthier granola bars versus a candy bar I was gonna say and speaking of that let's go over to where the granola bars are because there's such a variety and we can pick some good ones out how's that sound okay as you can see Liz and I have invaded the granola bar <laughs> slash cereal slash pop-tart aisle now Liz I grew up on pop-tarts so did you we did but not we shouldn't admit it but we did we did but not a really great choice especially when we've got all kind of granola bars that are much better for you and you're saying it's not a good Talk choice for the pop-tart because obviously high yeah. fat high sugar seven grams of fat versus two grams of fat per bar, right. which is much better, much healthier. I mean, you, you've really been into nutrition your whole life, um, and you know, as we've seen so many trends, like kids are being told something different, you know, eat high carb, eat low carb, eat right. slot, this and that. Would you exactly. say, obviously, you want to avoid fat? You want to avoid high and fat sugar. And, and a lot of sugar, um, calories. You want to look at that and kind of watch it. Like, most of these are 90, which is really good. Yep. Um, let me see, this on here is 210 just for one, so that's really not a good choice, so we're not going right. to choose that. And that's but the kind of thing when your kid eats it in the morning, they feel great, and then 30 minutes later, they crash. their eyes are drooping in their classroom. <laughs> right, exactly. So you want to like look at something like a bar, maybe you can even put like two in a lunch box right. and use for quick energy, and you've got neutral yeah. grain. They My boys are chocolate. big fans of these neutral grain bars, they're mm -hmm. about 120 calories. There you go. So, and they just, these things, they, they just, they love them. I always have these in my house stocked up. And also I'm a big fan of the cashew granola bars. They have organic, um, they are lower in sugar, no high fructose. The bottom line is read. You gotta come in, you, have you to gotta read the boxes. compare and listen nutrition to labels. That you brought up, which is really important, is some of these have nuts, which makes them a little higher in fat, but nuts so good for right. you. And of course, on the nut, that's a whole other story when we talk about nuts, especially yes. in schools. There's kids with a lot of different nut allergies. Yep. You gotta be really careful, especially if kids are sharing food. There are, there are a lot of kids that do, unfortunately, have nut allergies these mm -hmm. days. In fact, you know, they actually have nut-free tables at schools just right. to make that safe. Um, as much as my kids actually enjoy peanut butter, a lot of protein, mm -hmm. I don't send them to school with peanut butter sandwiches anymore because I'm always worried they're going to end up right. with a kid that has the peanut allergy. But if you can eat the nuts, a great snack. Yeah, great, yeah nuts are excellent. Excellent, yeah. excellent choice. And um, Very good. They, they hold you, which is really nice, right? They do. And um, you have a favorite. You, you holding your favorite? I, you know what? My actual favorite here are the new Kellogg's chocolate pretzel ones. They're quick energy. They taste amazing. The old granola bars didn't taste too good. Right. Kind of that... that the, cardboardy taste but all of these really now are wonderful the so. thing with these becoming more of a staple now for kids these these kind of bars versus getting the candy bar yes right? exactly um, for me the use of these are absolutely for snacks uh, right. my kids this usually is not their breakfast choice but it is breakfast on the go if you're stuck exactly um, for my kids in the morning they they love to have that egg you don't always have time for that right so I'll tend to make now breakfast sandwiches the night before Good idea. On a, you know, That's on efficient. A, on a, like a whole wheat English muffin, you know, you mm -hmm. can fry up an egg, melt a piece of cheese, wrap it up in foil, and they can warm it up in the morning. Love that, and it really holds them. You want to keep give your kids again a lot of protein. And Liz, if worse comes to worse, right over here we have the cereal. Aisle. Cereal is always quick, right? Always good in the morning or for a snack as well, and it does have nutritional value and is really delicious. So you know, and just one favorite good cereal in our house if we're going to have it is hot cereal. And I have friends oatmeal. actually Great. that make oatmeal in their crock pot the night before. Wow! They actually, you can throw oatmeal in a crock pot and turn it on low. When the kids wake up in the morning, you can sleep Great in a little idea. if you need to. And uh, throw in a little cinnamon and raisins, and, and that holds them too. It's all about you know keeping your kids fueled up so that they can come home with that those straight A's. Very good. <laughs> All right, Lizzie, are, are we done here in the market? Have we We're done in the sweet treat aisle. Okay. <laughs> but what, what happens with sweets? So we got to go to salty. 
salty, salty. It's all about oh. and and the chips, which because is kind of a trick. So we're going to show you the chip aisle now. Right? Okay, let's do it. So here in the chip aisle, I found a PV High senior, Will, who's getting ready for back to school, shopping for snacks. Um, what do you like to take to school for for food and snack? Um, I just like a sandwich and apple. I like keep it simple, and then maybe come home for like a, a little snack and then have dinner. Right now, do you find though if you don't eat well that it does affect your performance in school? Do you, do you see do you see the relationship there? Uh, yeah, like if you don't eat healthy, it, you get uh, tired easily. You get sleepy. You don't don't do as well. Like yeah. So you, so you see a difference. So t what's a what's a breakfast for you in the morning when you start off your day? Um, I'm a cereal kind of person. <laughs> yeah. And you said the ideal lunch, you pack a sandwich. You said you like tortilla chips, which is a good oh, choice, yeah. low fat. We were talking a little bit about milk. You're a milk drinker, and you like oh. chocolate milk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, some people say that chocolate milk uh, keeps you more hydrated than water or even Gatorade. So, yeah. so that, that's a choice for you. You excited for back to school big senior year? Yes, I'm, I'm very excited. All right, well, have a great year. Thanks, Will. Okay, the chip aisle. The chip aisle. Now, this is where things can get really dangerous really quickly because the old-fashioned chips, which, of course, are yummy and very oily. Okay, Fritos, 10 grams of fat in just a few chips versus a much better choice. Right. Thank goodness for these baked chips. Yes. These, these weren't around when we were growing up. They, they were really, They're tasty. Now, I'll be honest, the baked chip may not be as fun as the Fritos. I think they're a lot of fun, actually. But they are good. They're good. They're, they're good. They, and the fact is, my they're kids, yummy. if I pack them a lunch, put in a sandwich, put in the fruit, right. put in the granola bar, and there's not the chip in there and the Ziploc like baggie, that. they feel it inc it's incomplete. They That's right. Taste. And Liz, look at you. You've even showed me here. That's what I get. This yes. is, this is, these are a staple in the my... snack bags. My, um, I love them because they're usually 100 to 140 calories a bag. It's all measured out. Yep. Um, they stay fresh. Not, you know, the, this wet root is a little bit, you know, saves on the uh, Saves wallet. on money, it's right. It's cheaper to do this and bag them in Ziploc bags. But this One thing I want to say is like, um, what I do now with the kids, especially because I do serve them the baked chips, mm -hmm. I send them a container of salsa. Liz, you're spoiling Not a your big kids. jar like this, but no, no. <laughs> From the shopping for nutrition to... From snacks to the backpack. There you go. We're good. good. Yeah, we'll put the snacks in and we got to fill up the backpack with all those pencils and pens and um, we're going to uh, go and... We're going to go check that out now, right? Yeah, we're, we're going to get it done. A little more back to school shopping. All right. Stay with us. Here we are, CVS in Rolling Hills Estates, where they have more back-to-school supplies than you could fit in your house. Liz, or that I could just fit anywhere. I mean, fit, fit on top of Maria. Is this really, do we really need all of this stuff for back-to-school? What we're about to go through, which are typical back-to-school supplies, Maria, okay. this isn't even the half of it. Now, Whew. for many of the parents and the students watching right now, I know you know you can go onto your school's websites. They all have lists, right? teachers put them out in the summertime to prepare you about the basics you need. Okay. Um, Maria, I've had three kids that have gone through the schools here, and I have to say over time with experience that the lists are going to guide you, but really when it's said and done on the first day of school, your kids need to go to school with their backpack. Right, backpack is good. And we're going to talk about that not being heavy. Yes, okay. some pencils and some pens and a notebook. Exactly. And then, because I do find that the teachers do Oops. modify those lists and they change them, and you know, it gets very expensive as you're, as you're getting the supplies you need. Okay. Well, well let's talk about some, of, some supplies, like for instance, glue sticks, you said you can never have enough of these, especially you for can, younger kids. You can never have enough glue sticks, and of course, depending where, if your kid's in elementary school, it'll be a different type of list. Okay. Elementary kids tend to need the crayons and the marker pens and all of that, although okay. you'll find the same thing with middle school students, high school students, a lot of the same supplies. For me, the way I've managed it is that I think it's better to buy in bulk. Okay. And I also have a supply, school supply cabinet at home. All right. And so I have things because you'll find over the course of the year, your kids are telling you at 8 o'clock at night. That they, they need something. They need the report card um, Tomorrow. cover. Exactly. And you're out of those. And at 8 o'clock at night, you're making the trip to the store. Exactly. So to avoid that, if you keep stuff well stocked at home. Okay. Um, like the pens, the pencils, the glue sticks, scissors, all of that, it's good. Okay, now Liz, I know you have a really handy organizer that goes inside of the organizer, a little pouch. Again, it's all about organization, Maria, and you're yep. right. Um, these pouches are great. They, they fit right in the three-ring binder, and they hold quite a bit. The main thing is they're pencils, they're pens, they're oh, markers. Great. You know, colored pencils, a little scissor, glue So that stick. you're not losing that stuff, then right. it's not just falling out. And the nice out. thing is, um, you'll find that the teachers are wanting similar supplies. Okay. And so your kids can put in one pouch all of Everything. the typical supplies. Nice. And then and that then just goes right that, into the binder, right? Right. Or they can just leave it loose in the backpack. It does fit. Nice. But they can just pull it out for every class. Very cool. Which brings us to the... The backpacks? The backpack. Okay. The backpack's the most important thing. All right. Of course. And picking out a backpack with the kids, there's there's so many choices. Right. Um, I I tried to encourage my kids to get this type initially because right now we're hearing about how heavy these backpacks are they getting. Are. 
it's really, you know, the, the, the rule of thumb is from the, I read from the Pediatric Association that it, a kid's backpack shouldn't really weigh more than 20% of their body weight. Which is going to be pretty, roughly, what, well, 20, 10 pounds Yeah, maybe? exactly. So depending on the kids. So these, these ones on wheels are nice. And, but they say an average backpack weighs up to about 30 pounds, which yeah. is just too much with books and supplies. Right. So you want to make sure you're not overstuffing the backpack because that can cause back pain Or when you're later. distributing the weight. I know the kids are all in a rush. They're not going to do this. But tend to put the heavier items in the center in the, right. in the back of the back of the backpack. Um, I absolutely, any backpack I've ever bought my, for my kids has to have side pouches and mm -hmm. the reason for the water is bottles. water bottles, yep. which, you know, they still go to school with a couple water bottles. Now, is this something you should actually bring your son or daughter with you to buy because it's something that they want to oh, look at? My and kids always sure. want to pick out their own backpack. Yeah, because really, they're really all different colors and it's fun. So. Important to them. Okay. So, I have to say the main thing is, is just, um, again, check your inventory at home so right. you're not duplicating. Be organized. But once you are starting to pick your supplies, you know, Get everything in bulk. You'll save a lot of money. Have a set space in your home that your kids know they can go to to find the pens and pencils. And I exactly. have one other little um, suggestion, and that is I've done this in my youngest son's room. Um, in his closet, I have a hanging organizer. Nice. So there's six shelves. These are, you know, this is $10. So you hang it up, and then they can, you can put paper, colored papers, folders, pens and so pencils. So you can really be organized within your own home yeah, as well. Yeah, because again, like, making a successful year is, you know, if your kids are feeling rushed, if your kids feel like they can't find, they don't have what they need. You know, it's distracting, and we want to keep them focused and on task. Exactly. Now, do you need things like staplers, calculators? What, what other kind of things you know, do we need? The kids that don't really, there will be teachers that say, you know, bring scotch tape, bring, um, bring a stapler, and all of that. But in general, they don't. It really comes down to the basics. Okay. Your pens, your pencils, your colored pencils, things like that. One other, oh, one other thing is I've... I can't tell you how many uh, times. Well, actually, huge. You know, it only took me a few times to have this happen. <laughs> and then you got smart. Always have <laughs> at least a couple poster boards tucked away in a closet. Exactly. Because again, even though we all try to figure out what our kids have do when, they need it. We'll tell you at eight thirty, Mom. I have to do a demonstration tomorrow in science. Right. And I have. I need a poster board. And maybe even even um, poster like posters probably just just paper. Yes, is right. that, that yeah. a good thing to have? Okay, it's good to have good sheets of of, of all that construction paper on great on hand because right. you know everyone's trying to. You can never have enough. You can never have enough, and you know it's just there's a lot to go through. But you know check the school websites for the list. Get the list and uh, get going ahead of and, time. And uh, and have fun. All right. Joining me now are the two Heimer sisters. They're here shopping for back-to-school supplies. I know you're entering senior year of PV High. You're a college student now, yeah. Megan. Um, but in general, putting together your supplies for the year, how do you, how do you go about it? Well, generally, I'll wait till like I get the teacher's recommendations of what I need, and then I'll go out and buy whatever they tell me to get. Or I look through what we have at our house, and if I have everything, then I'm set. Right. But, I know for you now you're college bound, so um, what about for you? The supplies are probably a lot different than what you need in high school and middle school. Yeah, for me, the supplies I need for high school, I need a bunch of poster boards, and surprisingly, you need colored pencils a lot, um, and then like graph, graphing composition books. Right. Of course, it's all about being organized and keeping those backpacks organized, but how do you keep your, I mean, I'm sure, is your backpack pretty heavy? Yeah, my backpack probably weighs roughly 20 pounds on a good day. Is there any way to kind of avoid that, though? If you use your locker really well, then, yeah, you can avoid it. But, I mean, I normally put my textbooks in my backpack if I don't feel like carrying them around. So. Yeah. What's the most exciting part for the both of you now heading back to school? Well, for me, it's, I guess, see all my friends because I haven't seen them for like four months. And how about for you? What are you excited about? Uh, that it's pretty much my last year at PV, so I'm really like, excited that I get to venture out and like do college apps and yeah. make it a great year, girls. Thank you. Have fun shopping. Now, as you were saying, you need to bring a lot of pens to school, different kinds of pens, right? I, I'm is, not, is this good? Like, I'm not sure I like football one. and football pens. Ready? Hey, listen, I know we this, gotta have a little fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this passed the test for school, but it couldn't get you in the principal's office, Maria. We might have to ask Mitzi about that one. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> all right, it was good. The kid would definitely have a ball with that yeah. one. <laughs> well, I hope you, uh, I hope all the kids out watching have a great school year, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's going to be a successful one. I'm excited. Very successful, yes. Excellent. We've got them excellent. organized, and we know how to have less stress, and yeah. it's all good. And eat healthy and all of that. And eating healthy, and, uh, absolutely. And, of course, Maria and I will be visiting all of the campuses out there throughout the school year. You bet. So make it a good one. Thanks for joining us. I'm yes. Liz Brown Swanson. For Maria Saru. Thanks for joining us around the peninsula. See, See you next time. time.